Okay, welcome to the October 8th, 2024, Shrewsbury Housing Authority meeting. Welcome everybody. Um, this is the Shrewsbury Housing Authority's monthly meeting and we will start the with the minutes of September 11th meeting. Mr. Chair, if it pleases the board, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes as printed for September 11, 2024 <coughs> board meeting. We have a second? Second. second. Okay, any questions? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous, thank you. Treasurer's report. Um, I think, Mr. Chair, if I may, we have an update on the unfinished business, but if it's highlighted here, it might make sense for me to cover it now, if that's okay with you. I'm fine with that. Um, okay. I'm not sure whether Maria will want you to go through it again, but um, why don't you go through it? Okay, so it, it's no news. It was as it's accurately depicted as unfinished business. We, Kelly and I, took an initiative starting a month or two ago, maybe 60 days ago, to examine our CDs and our funds um, that were at a couple of different institutions, and essentially this board authorized us to move them. We started that by moving most of the CDs, uh, cashing them out and waiting for termination dates at Central One to, um, help me Kelly, what's the name of the institution? A cornerstone, oh, cornerstone. To a cornerstone. Um, we had one that was terminating a month or so later. We waited for that one to terminate. We brought it across. Essentially, once they were all there, um, Kelly and I went and visited them. We were just shy of about eight hundred thousand um, in in absolute uh, liquidity assets there. And um, given the market and the potential decline in interest rates, we wanted to strike while the iron was hot. So Kelly and I took 750,000 and moved it into a 5% yield CD, um, which is not insignificant given the volume of money and given the market that we were on. We made the decision to do 750, and it was a decision we arrived at jointly, um, to leave some liquidity. So there's roughly $40,000, $45,000 still in a checking account there. Um, they think it's important that we maintain a checking account. I agree, every month Kelly still gets rents that are gonna go into that account. And over time, we can assess, and you know, if 45,000 becomes 60,000, we could do a separate CD at 30 at a time or whatever. Um, but that was the decision we made. We signed it, we executed it. There are two controllers of the account, Kelly as primary, me as secondary. Um, we had also talked with this board. I would respectfully submit every May when there's a turnover in treasurer, whoever that secondary person is gets reassigned. But for right now, um, that that action is completely settled and put to bed. And um, I think Kelly and I feel really good about what we did. So. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions. What, uh, where do we stand with the rest of the funds? How are they sitting? Are there other funds that are sitting making similar amounts? So if you look at Kelly's chart, most of the other funds are just about 3%. Yep. Um, if you scroll up one page, you'll yep. see that. I, um, I think given the macro trend right now, we were, uh, I don't want to break our arm patting ourselves in the back, but we were damn lucky to get five. Most people weren't offering five. I think given it makes sense from a treasury diversity point of view to have, um, a couple of accounts spread around. So essentially, most of the accounts still at Central One are around 3%. I think with declining interest rates, 3% is solid. And we'll see when they expire, when they move. Most of those don't expire till next year. All but one of them um, expires this year. One expires this year, all the rest are next year. So I would say um, it's a good treasury um, status that we have roughly 3.3 million in our standard revolving accounts roughly 400,000 um, at Central One, and then roughly 800,000 now at Cornerstone Bank. So Cornerstone actually got the lion's share of um, the divested, but they earned it with the business with the interest rate. Okay. I hope that answers your question. It does. Um, don't think that's all liquid money, folks. We don't, we, we can't spend it. <laughs> actually, we can't touch 751 and 407. It's completely tied up in the CDs. Uh, but we can't, a lot of that money is not touchable yeah. anyway. That's one of the, another one of the reasons we did leave the 50,000, or just shy of 50,000 as liquid at corner. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, anybody? No. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Kelly. We, uh, like I said, took a few trips and we got it done. And, uh, I think it was a uh, uh, well served for the board and the authority at large. Okay, so it's time to go to the revolving account. Okay. 
Questions, comments, discussion? Not for me. Anybody? None for me. Okay, there being none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we pay the check registry and 46 checks in the amount of 107 391 80. For motion, do we have a second? Second. All right, we motion the second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion for the portability out. Two checks in the amount of 268724. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'd like to make one more motion, Mr. Chair, for the Section 8, 147 checks at 181, 263 even. All right, that's the landlord and, uh, and tenant. Tenant's te tech Correct. register. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'd like to make one final motion uh, regarding the monthly payroll to pay it as printed. Second. We have a motion to second. Any questions? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Motion Paul. Mr. Chair, if it pleases the board, I would like to take a motion that we take a new business out of order town program slide item as we have a guest speaker to join us. We have a motion to take uh, town programs out of order. Do we have a second? Second. Are we all in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. If I may indulge with an introduction. Please. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Keith Baldinger, who is the Assistant Town Manager of Operations, reached out to me roughly a month or so ago to talk about some new town programs that he thought might, and I, I applaud his outreach and I applaud the community spirit, he thought might benefit our residents. Um, specific programs, and I'm not going to steal any of this thunder, around the food pantry and the van and, um, and, and a new consortium or board that he's forming, I think it's called the Human Services Leadership Board. And um, the next step after that outreach was Maria and myself got on a call with him and he walked us through um, what I found to be very interesting, very informative. He was even talking about a delegate of this board sitting on a seat of a new board and proposing this information to the tenants at large as well as the board. At that time, Ms. Smith and I suggested that it might make sense for him to come to the board and, mm -hmm. sorry Keith, represent to us, <laughs> at least maybe in detail, to this board and to the residents at large to talk about some of these programs and then if there's actionable uh, fallout from that, meaning we need to nominate a person or something or however that works, uh, we'd all be on the same page and we'd be working from the same set of information. So with your permission at that point, I'd like to turn it over to Keith to let him elaborate on everything. Hi Keith. Hi. How are you? Thank you for you and I appreciate you taking me out of order. Um, uh, so I'm here, as Paul said, to talk about a couple of initiatives um, that the town is working on, and we're, we, we see this as um, hopefully a help to and possibly with some collaboration from the Housing Authority to um, reach more residents in our community. Um, the first um, one, as uh, Paul mentioned, we have a group that's called the Human Services Leadership Team. Um, it has been around for a bit. Uh, but includes uh, department heads from uh, departments including the library, council on aging, recreation, the school department, uh, veterans, uh, and SYFS. And we have been working over this summer to really improve uh, cross-department collaboration um, and, and work together as, you know, on community-focused items as opposed to just um, siloed department items. Because one of the things that we, oh, they all do great things, but one of the things that we find is um, there's some duplication of work across departments. And all this is an extreme um, uh, example, like, you know, the recreation department uh, would have a book fair and the library has a basketball uh, group, right? I mean, that's really extreme, but it's, it's, it's kind of, it gives you a sense of some of, some of the issues we have. And so the, the reason for this is truly to um, get that group together, um, collaborate, um, on schedules, collaborate on um, programs and events that they do best, um, you really to try and reduce workload across departments, right? So the library's not doing things that really are outside of their range, and same thing for recreation or COA or, or whoever. Um, so a second, and so like I said, the, the secondary goal of that is really to reduce the workload um, in those departments. Um, the other initiative um, that comes out of ARPA funding 
that we've been working on over this year. We have a subcommittee that includes a couple of select board members. Um, it, it revolves around food insecurity um, and connecting with our most vulnerable community members. Um, examples do include, like Paul mentioned, um, we, we purchased a van because one of the things that we learned about people with food insecurity or any other type of um, vulnerability mm -hmm. is there's some pride involved, right? So they, people don't necessarily want to walk into a food pantry and ask, they don't necessarily want to call somebody and ask them for help. So we're trying to bring to their door. And, and um, um, so that's part of the van with some volunteers. Um, the Council on Aging created a food pantry. Uh, they have 48 families already that are um, part of that uh, and utilizing that. We're collaborating with St. Anne's and their food pantry. One of St. Anne's issues is um, they have, like, there's a lot of donated food that they could get from grocery stores. They have no way to get it. So that's one of the things that we're, we're working, we're actually working with the RISE program at Maple and Maine and their students going into, um, potentially going into these um, supermarkets and working with the manager, collecting the food, bring it to St. Anne's and they sort it, they help fill the banana boxes or whatever to go to people's home. So we're, we're trying to make it truly um, a community collaboration, right? So one of the things that we, we, we keep coming across when we have these meetings, whether it's with HSLT or food uh, and security subcommittee is um, the connection to the Shrewsbury Housing Authority, right? Like as, as a group and, and you know, you have some very vulnerable residents that live in this community that we feel could maybe benefit from some of these things that we're working on. And then this is not to, and, and like I said earlier, this is not to um, increase any workload um, with SHA, but really to support maybe programs that you already have, or hey, is there something missing from your community that you need help with that we could somehow, um, you know, offer some services? You know, we work with SYFS, as you know. Um, we're working with them to contract um, a staff member that could work with um, residents that may need SNAP benefits or some other kind of benefit or medical, you know, solving medical issues, right? That so they could have a we could have a person that has office hours or come to a certain place and meet with people to try to help them through some of those things, um, and then it and, and to make that person a, the same face, right, all the time, right? Like that that one that one person. So. I'm really here to extend that um, support from the community and hopefully get your buy-in to maybe collaborate with us on that. Um, Paul talked about um, having a board member, so we have the triad group in the community that really um, is really focused on seniors and um, some of their vulnerabilities. Um, it's a group that meets monthly, like we would like um, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority to have a seat at that table. And then our human services leadership team, um, we have not, we used to meet monthly, we're working on a cadence for our, our new meeting, which might be monthly or bi-monthly, um, to have somebody from your, uh, and maybe it's um, Kelly, but to, to um, attend those so you can learn about our programs and we can help you with the programs that you have. Um, that's the gist of it, and so I'm here to, ask for that and, and um, like I said, try and support this group because we, we this Shrewsbury Housing Authority is part of the community and we want to make sure that we connect as much as possible with both you and your residents. Thank you. That's where we're at. Interesting. Okay, questions, anyone? Um, I would just comment, make the same comment in a public forum that I made in a private one, which is I applaud the outreach. I was thrilled to see the town and, and keep extending, you know, kind of the olive branch. And, you know, I love it when I hear about knocking down silos, deliberate or unintentional. As he said, someone's doing X and, you know, we're doing Y and neither knows or it's, you know, cross contaminating. Um, we, we, from my point of view, whatever we can do to be a part of this and bring this good work to our residents and or possibly contribute to the work. I'd be, you know, generally speaking, in favor of. So yeah, I think I'm too. I, I think collaboration between different authorities and different groups and different uh, uh, teams is always a, a good thing, and especially in a community like ours. Um, so um, yeah, thank you for bringing this to our attention. I think I think um, 
I'd like to see, at the very least, I'd love to see a board member or someone from the Shrewsbury Housing Authority um, involved in this effort because I do believe that we have residents that would benefit. And, Definitely. and um, just the outreach alone would, would uh, go a long way. So, um, and, and there may be an area that you have that we're not aware of, right? And how can we support that, right? So, so that's, that's really, you know, finding out what everybody's needs are and, and trying to come up with a plan and solutions to solve them together. Yeah, and that's part of the whole idea of having groups come together is to see what kind of resources, you know, a group like that pulls together or brings to the table, so to speak. So, um, of course, the Housing Authority brings a resource to, to the table as well. So it's certainly something that um, we should, you know, mm -hmm. bear in mind. Um, but I, for one, I, I, I welcome the idea of collaboration like this. So yeah. um, the next question is, who's going to do it? <laughs> who's going to jump on board? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't want to state the obvious, but I, we, it seemed, oh, no, 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 uh, would not be the obvious. That's the buck. That's the I will state the obvious if I'm cornered. Um, uh, but it seemed like, you know, when he talked about the collaboration with the seniors and the council on aging, I know Ms. Smith is very involved in any of those. I'm not going to put her on the spot, but that seemed, she was on the original call with us and she seemed to indicate that that might be something she would be interested in. That's entirely a decision for her. But but to me, that's where the, um, the, the lines are, are really um, bold because she, she's already got her toe in the water of a couple of those other initiatives. I'm um, in hook, line, and sinker. That's well, I, I, like I said, I didn't <laughs> want to state the obvious. But, uh, seniors are my passion. Right? Exactly. So, um, so is this something, Maria, that you would be willing to um, take absolutely. on as an additional? Uh, Not that I need more to do. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm already so involved with that. Yeah, that's what I meant when I said about you know, state the obvious. It just right. amazes me the population that we have in our town of seniors. And every time I bring that stat up to people from other towns, it's like I can't believe like a quarter of our population are seniors. We have almost 10,000 seniors in our town. And some of them very vibrant and some of them needing help. And I just think everyone should be on board. So I'm happy to do whatever I can do. So now you've stated the obvious. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How do the other members feel about this, Kathy? I think Maria is the natural choice for this. Do we need a motion to appoint her to this? I think we should. Um, uh, Keith, what's the name of the, the, the human services board that you referenced? So we have the human services leadership team, which is kind of an ad hoc group, mm -hmm. Colonel, but the triad group is the group that we would ask Maria to be. That's, that's know, what I needed, okay. Yep. So the triad group, the Shrewsbury triad group. Yes. Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm happy to make that motion. Go for it. Um, and I also agree, I echo uh, Mr. Sweeney's sentiments. I think Maria is the very logical and natural choice. She was on the initial call and it just seems very much in a wheelhouse, much like Mr. Sweeney sits on um, Community Community yeah, I always get the acronym wrong. <laughs> Community <laughs> Preservation Board, and, and we've all sat on various other committees in our term. I think that makes sense. So, yeah. if Ms. Smith is okay with this, I will make a, a, a motion. I'd like to nominate uh, that Ms. Smith s represent the Shrewsbury Housing Authority on the Shrewsbury Triad Board moving forward. Second. All right. So, any other discussion? Okay. Are we all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Great. Maria, thank you. You're welcome. For once again. Stepping up. Keith, thank you very thank much. Keith, thank you. When we talked, I thought this was logical, but I wanted to at least get you in front of the board, let the board talk about it, and move forward to the. Is there a question, Kathy? Just, uh, not, just following up on the human service leadership team, um, you had mentioned, is that a, the type of thing that not that Kelly needs more work, but is that <laughs> something? Well, as long as we're tossing out jobs. <laughs> as long as we're giving people more work. Um, well, I, think, I, think, I, think it, I think it would be benefit to. To, to the group. Yeah, that seems more operational. Yeah. yeah, yes. And, and, and just so you know, um, we, we are working on workshops right now. We will have a cadence for those meetings soon. Um, they're not always, you know, they always don't have to be in person. Like we have accommodations for um, being virtual. So, uh, so yeah, the, the, I would think that's a lot. Not that it would far away, but it would be a big travel. Mm -hmm. And then, and Maria, um, Renee D'Angelo manages the triad group. So I'll connect with her and have her reach out to you for that meeting schedule. Okay. 
And okay. I don't think we need a motion for Kelly because that's no. an operational <laughs> think, normal extension of her job. Anyways. I think we'll just ask her yeah. if she can yeah. yes. okay. right. do that and, okay. then, and report back to us um, <laughs> how it's going and maybe report okay. on it. Um, if you do have something to report next meeting, we would welcome that. So thank you, Keith, very much for coming in. Thank you very much, thank Keith. You, uh, thank you. You're more than welcome to be on your way. We appreciate you coming in and helping us out. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Have a good night. Sure. Mr. Chair, with that, I would uh, make a motion that we go back into the agenda, which would bring us to state programs. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Motion. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. we're back. Thank you, Paul. Yep. All right, Kelly. <coughs> Francis Gardens. Francis Gardens, we have one vacancy. Um, we had the first offer refuse. By um, the tenant, in other words, tenant declined. Tenant. Okay. Tenant declined. The we don't second see that very frequently. No. Yeah. The second showing is being showed tomorrow. The second offer is being showed tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question about that? Just a logistical question. If someone refuses the first choice, do they go back to the bottom of the list? How does that work? So they have three. Um, Three refusals. Mm -hmm. Once they get three refusals, they're off the champ waiting list. Okay. Unless there's a reasonable accommodation like a doctor's note in one of the notes. But where do they go after the first refusal? Does it do they go back to the back of the list? Yes. Okay. And if another question. housing authority can pick them up okay. because they're already screened and qualified. Thank you. Okay. Just like baseball must be screening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like baseball. Okay. Elizabeth Gardens, there's no vacancies. And we have a family unit, and that is in the process of make ready. Okay. Okay. The towers, no vacancies. Section 8, 100%. Okay. Any questions, anyone? Okay. Social services report. Um, the resident coordinator saw 39 residents this month. Thirty home visits, huh? Oh yeah. Wow. Okay. There being no questions, we'll move on. CPC update? Oh, I'm next? Okay, sorry. It wasn't in my chart. No, CPC. Yeah, I am. Um, CPC update. Not much has changed since our last meeting. Um, as I mentioned, then there are four warrant articles at a global four town meeting. Three of them are relative to um, repairs at the Congregational Church, which has been deemed sort of a, a town um, landmark. So historic, historic mm -hmm. landmark. One is the um, a lightning rod on top and then there's some repairs to the structure and then the third was um i think continued operations of um at the uh cemetery for preservation of some of the older cemetery stones so they did provide us with kind of a cool little report that um with just with budget numbers and everything else which i just got we met last night. So Kelly, I'll pass this on to you. And if you could maybe make it part of our packet for next month, sure. more for not really for discussion items, unless someone has questions, but more so people can read all the, the details and um, we don't have to go over budget amounts now. Um, there is a subcommittee, um, which is Shrewsbury Affordable Housing Trust. There's two members from Affordable Housing Trust and two members from CPC, of which I'm on and uh, we are meeting Friday to try to um, just kind of drill down a little bit on some of the different projects we can work on. So I'll have more to report on that next month. Okay. All right, so that's also the Affordable Housing Trust report as well, I think. Yep. And um, with that, we'll move into unfinished business, and I can report that I did uh, follow up uh, with John Grenier, we followed up uh, contact with the town and the engineering department relative to Elizabeth Street, and 
um, the availability of sewer. Um, it is not a so-called needs area, however, uh, because we would be applying under 40B um, and because it is the Town Housing Authority, um, he was comfortable, I talked to the, our town engineer, he was com comfortable that we will be able to tie into sewer. Excellent, so, thank you. So, um, and I told him that uh, once we, he did bring to my attention the fact that there is a 12 inch sewer line actually running through the property. Oh. Um, and with that in mind, I've asked him to get the plans to us and to uh, Jarvis so that um, Jarvis can plot it and then um, Grenier can, can, if necessary, uh, revise the plan so that we're not interfering with that because you can't build on a, on a pipe like that. So, okay. um, so we, it's, it's crucial that we know where that is. Um, but um, sewer is available and um, water is available. We will be able to uh, move forward. Um, with that in mind, I, I note um, that the state has sent out a notice um, suggesting that there is also aid to be had um, and obtained uh, through the state now for uh, utilizing unused property um, at our various properties. Um, so if we have surplus property, they're, they're willing to um, um, not donate, but um, somewhat invest um, state monies with us in this process. Um, it remains to be seen what kind of strings are attached to that, but, but we'll see. Um, I think it's something that we should pursue. I think it's something that we should find out more about and um, maybe bring this to the attention of our liaison uh, for the purposes of this particular um, aspect of it and then and then take it from there I don't know um, you know I've seen this before where they say it's available but then uh, the money gets sucked up elsewhere so um, without getting our hopes too high I would suggest that now's the time if we're ever going to get help, help from the state it appears that there is money there to do so um, and we'll see with that in mind um, I'll be happy to work with Kelly to uh, pursue that and, um, subject obviously to the to the board's approval, but um, it's something that needs to be pursued. Kelly, and I went and contacted the state, um, and received the application today by email. There is a lot of information that I do not know that I'd like to set up and meet with you on. Um, yep. But the application is about four pages long. But That's I think bad. we can just That's add stuff in and see where they want to help us. In the document in our packet where she refers to the application process, I, I read that and it was um Interesting. it was very I mean, not what I would call fastidious information, mm -hmm. property address, size of parcel, plot plan if available, like very yeah. what I would call baseline. Yeah. Type of information. yeah, I don't think they get into the nitty gritty right. until until you go through it. Get their attention. And yes, at correct. that stage, you're probably going to be correct. Um, put more under a microscope. Correct. So. Mm -hmm. Very high level. It's but it is something that I think we we I agree we should we pursue. pursue. Yep. Kathy, um, I do think we should pursue it, and I think we should pursue it quickly. Um, mostly because you know, as more people read this, it, this MMO has been out for a little bit. The more people that are going to uh, tap into that money. So the sooner we can get it in, the better. And just two questions on your report, Richard. Um, getting the plot plan to Jarvis and then those plans to Grenier, how do we have a plan to fund that? Or will that be potentially part of the monies that we hope to get from the Commonwealth? We, well, we don't have a present plan to fund that. Um, uh, but uh, as we have in the past, um, I think that we have credit with uh, Jarvis and Grenier to keep moving forward, and we will trust that we'll be able to come up with some funding somehow to, to keep going. We won't go too far out on the limb here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that that process is going to be, um, it shouldn't be that expensive to, okay. to update the plans and to, and to get, you know, 
to the extent that it would be necessary for us to show um, what we have in mind when we're discussing this with the state. Because it's really just making adjustments to the plan that they did. In fact, okay. I, I talked with um, um, all three parties today, the town and, and both engineers, to um, to emphasize that I wanted this as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so the town has not located the plans as of me leaving my office. Um, as yet, they have not uh, located the plants, which is not unusual. Um, you know, the sewer plans are uh, right. <laughs> tough to locate <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes. Probably 30 years they're old, too. All over the place, right. too. And so, as soon as he's done that, um, I, I'm going to push it to get it done as fast okay. as I can. And I'm happy to help because it does relate into CPC monies yes. and all that. So, yes. happy to be a resource. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think that um, in light of where we're at and, and at the stage that we're at, I think we can be comfortable moving forward. Um, okay. Assuming that we'll be able to get some assist, assistance somewhere here. Okay. So, um, anybody else? No. Awesome. Okay. Made my day. Um, Paul already talked to us about uh, Cornerstone Bank. So yeah, you can see the actual percentage I there on the upper right hand five corner, 5105. Yep. So very, very, very pleased with that. 750,000. Very, very good. And we talked with um, Mr. Baldinger. Mr. Baldinger about the town programs. And uh, again, thank you, Maria, for stepping up on that. And free webinar coming up. Yes, DHCD is sending out free webinar. One is board member training, and the other is legal implications of cyber attacks. Okay. Any questions on that? I think we we received notice on that. Did, I think yes. I saw I saw that go by. I saw that too. Is the board member training is that for new board members, or is that something we should take if we've already taken it? Do we have to do it every so many years? You do. Okay. Hmm. This is different, question. though. I think yeah, this, this is, is this is not part of our mandatory training. The way I read this, this is um, incremental or additional training beyond our mandatory. Um, for what purpose? Sci to learn about cyber attacks. Yeah. For, for technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's how I read this. I could be wrong. And then the second one is fiduciary. Our normal training covers fiduciary, but this doesn't read to me like our standard online digital training. To me, this is almost like instruction that would enable us to be better served when it comes time to do our formal training or testing. Um, but I read it as it did nowhere do the words mandatory or direct or I agree. admit that. I agree. Up. No, I, I do agree that this is a, in addition to yes. um, what I just asked Kelly about. Yeah. And she'll keep us all up to up to date in terms of when you're due. Yes. So related to this, as I do on a monthly basis, I've recertified Kelly on the ELOC system. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And Kathy. We did receive a memo um, from Kathleen Cohane about um, Central Mass Housing Alliance is doing a session on Monday the twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. At 7.30 in the morning, and people that know me well will be shocked that I have signed up for this. I did see that. <laughs> but I have I almost made a joke over email, but I was afraid. Yeah. Like, not only is that early, but that's early on a Monday, but Steve and I are definitely going. We're going to carpool, so if anyone else is interested, you know, and wants to catch a ride, um, we'll be there. And hopefully there's coffee. Well, what is that about? Intravenously. Just, just a matter of um, um, I, um, what is that? Um, Ed Augustus is going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, he is going to be presenting. And um, let me see if I can find her email so I can be, give you an accurate. So what's the date? It's the 28th of October at 7. The, the, the doors open at 7.30. The program starts at 8. Um, Where is it? Uh, it at Holy... Um, Six Institute. Yeah, so WPI. Impact Breakfast. Yeah. Um, CMHA Impact Breakfast, board member of the Housing Alliance, uh, Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, will be leading a discussion on how we're addressing the housing crisis locally and across the state. Yep. Okay. So we'll, you know, of course everyone's welcome, but we're certainly going to go and can report back after sure. our next meeting. Good. <laughs> if I wake up. <laughs> Set your alarm. Yep. I have to know. That's why I said I'd pick Steve up because then I have to be up. Okay. Um, any other business from the board? I think we have one last item on the agenda packet, Mr. Chair. Uh, Three? Yeah. Two. Oh. Okay. So. We all received an email. Yep. Regarding Christmas tree. 
I did reach out to Chief Kobe and I believe I sent you his email mm -hmm. that he responded. Yes. Um, Everybody have this? I don't think I saw that. It's in the packet. It's, it's the very last page of the packet. But it's not in the business. Yeah, I think it was new business that came in late. Yeah. Any other members? Pardon me? What? No, it's in here. I just haven't scrolled all the way. Mm -hmm. That I have a copy if you need another copy. We've got it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so where are we? So what Chief Kobe is saying is live Christmas trees are not allowed. Yes. Artificial trees are allowed provided they meet the flammability requirements below and do not obstruct egress paths. Yes. Um, he gives they have to have the tag on the tree. Yes. Um, each individual artificial decorative vegetation item shall be labeled um, in compliance with 12.6.9.5.1 yes. in approved manner yes. to have those. Yes, you're right. And we're allowed to have the artificial tree. So before that happens, where is this initial year? Yeah. Just mm -hmm. let me see the tree. Let me take a picture of it. Okay. Let me send it. Okay. I want a Christmas tree as much as you guys do. I just want to follow the rules and everything. Um, and we can have it out in the lobby where it's not blocking anything. Yeah. So just, just, just as a matter of. Just yeah, I was going to say historically, Mr. Chair, if I may. I think yeah. last year we were. The entity, the Shrewsbury Housing Authority, was giving conflicting information by two different representatives of the same fire department, essentially saying yes and no from two different sources. So we actually, at the time, asked Kelly right. by next October to please get ahead of it and see where we lie. So I applaud her for getting ahead of it. So here the we next are. The next yeah. decision is what we do with this information. Okay. Okay. That was just historical background. So, yeah. Has there been a request to put a Christmas tree? Yes. In the lobby. Yes. Yes. They all would like a Christmas tree in the lobby. <laughs> we always had one. This is a, this it, has been, you know, for as long as I've been here, mm -hmm. this has been a question that comes up every few years. And, yes. and it, it has always been said that no live trees are allowed. Yes. So for obvious reasons. So um, good. I'm glad you, you followed it up. And as long as we follow these guidelines, we should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have no issue with this. I don't even think this is a board issue. I think this is, yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. an operation. It's a management issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If the fire chief says we can have it, we can have it. Yeah. Well, the, the real <laughs> issue was, to be very fair, last year people. we had two different people in writing giving us two different statements of... And Kelly was asking problems. us for guidance. We couldn't give it because of the two conflicting... Right. right. So right. I, I applaud right. Kelly for being yeah. in front of it. Frankly. Yes. Thank Good. you, Kelly. You're welcome. So, Al, you had something to say? No, no, I was just saying it's right what Paul was saying because there was two different right. people giving us information that we we can't have it, we can't have it. You know, so now this is all taken care of. Let it, it's up to Kelly, let her look at the, yeah. the tree and mm -hmm. see if we can put it up. Beth, you had something to ask? I did. Does this apply to Francis Gardens as well? Because we have a six. This will apply to all. Yeah, if this isn't federal or state. This is uh, municipal. This is, this, this, is this is town of Shrewsbury. Well, this is the, the state fire marshal's yeah. rules. Well, I mean, but as it, yeah. presented to us via the town it of Shrewsbury. It applies to all of us. Yeah. And all I ask is before it's up, decorated, call me. I can take a picture and make sure it reads. And she make sure it, she'll make sure that it, she needs to make sure that it meets the regulations. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes ma'am. But we have a, I have a problem because if it's too big, okay, now this tree right here is not that big, we can put it away. If there's a bigger tree going to be in the lot, right? Where is that tree going to be stored the last ever last 11 months when there's no room Holly in that closet? Well, and we yeah. used to have it underneath the, the staircase in that hall down there, but the fire department doesn't want anything underneath the staircase I, either. 
Oops. That's a Kelly issue. Kelly can figure out where yeah. to start it. Do you want me and to answer? Gonna you can answer it if you want, Kelly. Who's going to take what? Who's going to pay for the big tree? I, actually, I had two donations last year. So you're gonna pay, you're people, gonna people who wanted to donate, so I, you, we don't have I, to worry about that. I will work with you. Okay. So we will make plan. room in that yeah. in that plot. I'm I'm sorry that we need to make room in there for the tree. There's a lot of junk in that room. We it's just need to make room. This is a Kelly issue. Yeah. yeah. This is a Kelly issue. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, her to deal with. Yep. Just leave okay. it all you know. Anybody else have anything to say here about this? <laughs> all right. Do we have anything else that uh, any of you have on your mind other than it's October already? <laughs> uh, uh, wasn't on the board. Uh, okay. I think she might have a. All right, Kelly, one minute. more thing? Yes, I have one more. Um, James sent a budget revision. Oh, this is including the resident service coordinator in the bonus that you guys gave to me. Um, it has to be sent to the HCD for approval. Thank you. And it needs to be signed. Roll it and sign. Um, are we signing it, this or are we signing something else that you're giving us? It, the end. I already. Basically, what this is saying, it's an increase to the subsidy line of 60000 60, for the new resident service coordinator. The increase in the administrative salaries is a result of the inclusion of the resident service co coordinator employee. And the additional compensation that we, that we voted earlier. Yes. Right. Um, and the increase in employee benefits is directly related to the increase in Medicare taxes payable because of higher total authority salaries. And we have an, an administrative sundry office expense increase of five thousand dollars. Okay. And but it, so yes, uh, there's please. multiple packets here. Oh, you, we're going to sign that one. This is for us. Yes. Okay. So this we can sign that when we sign. Check this was for us yeah. to have for our records. Which I'm sure we'll all keep. Yes. And all right. Do we have a motion? Um, do we need to vote that in? Probably. I believe we do. It's a revised yes, budget. I believe we do. Okay, then I need that to look at it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, if it please the board, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the revised fiscal year 2025 budget, including the budget narrative for fiscal year rendering 331.25, dated today, with the four line item increases as stated on the front page. As printed. And as printed in the uh, budget document Second. itself. Correct. All right, we have a motion. Second. All right, any questions, comments, discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, is there anything Mr. else? Motion, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay, did anybody have anything else they wanted to say? Okay, motion to adjourn? Yep. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, folks.